another episode of Broad Daylight with me, Chris Moore. Today on Broad Daylight, my guest is Honorable Mohammed Dauda. He is the YMP for Adenta, and he's the second deputy majority leader for Greater Accra House of the Youth Empowerment Consortium and Youth Model Parliament. Today, we are going to look at the youth perspective when it comes to security issues here in Ghana. We want to know whether we are safe here in Ghana looking at the increasing number of crimes. You're welcome, sir. Thank you, Honorable. You're looking amazing, spritastic, caucastic, and multastic. <laughs> you look splendid oh, and gorgeous. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you. If I have to come and look for uh, you to give me tips on how to wear proper kaftan. Okay. So you're looking amazing. Kaftan is my thing. Oh, I yes, see. Yes, yes. Interesting. Interesting. So sometimes I just put on the coat dress yes, I and mean, look a bit casual. Oh, but I see. But the kaftan actually is my thing. I see. Yes. Interesting. I see. Welcome to Broadway Lights. Thank you, Honorable. Mm. It's been an honor to have you in our studios. It's an honor to be here. Oh, great. So you are talking about um, as to whether Ghana is safe currently. Mm. Now let's look at statistics. Okay. In, a, in a, rep a recent report from the Bureau of Public Safety indicates that violent crimes in Ghana has gone up to 40.8% with death rate of 53.7% compared to 2022 mm. with Accra and Kumase leading the charts. Mm. Interestingly, we have um, recent issues going on in Mankesim, Kaling, we have Boko, we have Wa, which is very interesting. Is Ghana safe? <laughs> All right. Good morning to you and good morning to your Chinese viewers. I, I want to use this opportunity to say hi to my constituents. Hi, hi. constituents. Adenta. Adenta people, I love you so much. Okay. It's because of you I'm here today. Great. So I'm speaking for Adenta. Great. And also let me say a very good morning to the General Secretary of the IEC. Okay. That is Mr. Marfo Edward. He has, he's doing amazing for the Youth Consortium empowerment and it's a great thing and let me also use this opportunity to say hi to my honorable i mean uh, majority leader okay. honorable isaac or say also the member of parliament for the good people of dominica okay okay so um back to your issue of uh if ghana is safe <laughs> ghana is safe ghana is not safe you know okay. in two ways as i will be speaking from the angle of being a youth Okay. And how it feels to be in a country where, like you, you rightful said, where I mean, security is becoming an issue uh, and it's becoming a topic of the day every single day where we have to look out for what we can do and what we can survive. Now, Ghana can't be said it is safe in some extent, in other extents it's not safe. In the aspect that if you look at what is happening in current country, the uprise in insecurity, especially among the youth, it's something that you can write to home about. Okay. And that can be contributed to me. I will look at it from three angles. That is the economic factor, mm -hmm. the societal factor, and then I um, may say, like say, the other factor will look at its security in its own context in the perspective that's what is the state security apparatus working on. So if you look at the economic factor, Ghana is not safe. Why and how? Okay. So we have been following the trends of economical statistics, how things are running from the state from the state. If you look at the unemployment rate in Ghana as it stands now, in the year 2000, 2021, it was 4.7. 2022, as it stands now, it is 13.7. You can look at a gap. So, there is a word that says uh, if there is no job for demand to do, definitely they will find a way for them to do. Now, the youth are so aggressive and that they are looking at how to be able to fit themselves. So, they are ready to do anything to be fed. Anything. And the word anything means anything. It doesn't matter even if they are killing. For example, the incident in Mankesim. We had a similar incident in 
and this and even war recently where people are actually killing for rituals i mean it's even happened Kaswa right here in the greater Accra region where even two teenage boys who don't even know what is called money they are now ready to kill to make money to be able to make out there right now everybody knows what's called money even the one in the womb <laughs> knows what is called money okay that's the better woman we're not in parliament <laughs> you know? so the point is that if you look at the statistics and how things are running for example in our police service we saw what happened at uh, the pavilion shooting where even a police the report has emerged that the people who even orchestrated this deal was also a security apparatus police person gunned another police to steal money from the state that should tell you how hard the system has been because if there is a job right now for all of us to do like the way you are in the studio right now i don't think when you see my kaftan you would like to kill me and take the kaftan from me but if you don't have any means and you think that this thing shall i also have to get it you use all means necessary available to you to make sure you get it i hope you are looking at the mm. point so the youth are aggressive and most especially because there is no work in the system my sister right now as we are speaking honorable let me use the word honorable because we are also our honorable member so right now as we are speaking if you look at uh, even feeding per day Mm. In this country, as it stands right now, even gobe. I hope you know what is called gobe. Yes. Okay, yes. So, even beans. Even, if you don't know. Yes. So gobe prices has been increased. From what to what? Ah, those days they used to say you can even get gobe at three cities or two cities. All right. So if you want to get gobe and uh, cocoa, mm -hmm. that is a, the right, right plantain. Mm -hmm. At least five cities, six cities, you should be able to be satisfied. But these days, you have to spend like ten cities to be able to satisfy. So the question is, what happened to the mere guy on the street who is making, who is not making anything at all? Let's talk about those who is not even making anything at all. And then let's now look at somebody who is making as low as 200, 300 cities a month. Don't forget that the person is paying rent. The person will be paying lights bill. The person is also looking at the stomach. Let's say even if you are feeding 10 cities a day, morning, afternoon, evening, combined, you are feeding 10 cities, and you are not doing anything, how do you survive? Not you are not doing anything, like if you don't want to do anything, but you are not doing anything because nothing is there for you to do. Are you sure there are no jobs? You see? Because speaking to some industry players, they are saying that there are jobs for the youth to do, yet that they don't have the technical know-how to, to, to get themselves involved. That's the point. And I like you are bringing out this point. So, if I don't have the technical know-how to host a show, that's mean I don't have the technical know-how to become a secretary too. So, those who don't have the technical know-how to be maybe be in the studio, is there any other job that they can also do? It's, you know, we, we are in this country where I believe the employees or employers mm -hmm. would want to see people who are quote unquote mm. serious. Mm. Let me put this in this context. We saw here in Ghana where a guy used a placard mm -hmm. and was standing at the roadside looking for a job mm -hmm. with his name and his qualification and mm -hmm. everything. He was so determined. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that the youth are not determined mm -hmm. or they are not trying hard enough, but that is somebody who was desperate to get something to do. Is it that the youth, we are not trying enough or something is blocking us? Honorable. I am speaking for a youth, and I'm a youth as a person, and you are also in our whole system. I am telling you that 80% of the youth are trying, but the work is not there for them. Because even if you go to a job place, now that is why I'm using, speaking from the aspect of the economy. Even the company you are being employed with doesn't even have the money to pay you. Some people are being owned. Typical example, let's go back to Napco. How many months were they owed before they were laid out? The person is taking home as low as 700 cities a month. Somebody is staying at Kaswa, he's working at Tema. Calculate transportation. National service personnel, how much have you, have they been paid? 520 or 550? 559 cities. How much is the transportation? Let's see from where I'm coming from. 
it's, it's like gone to this place. As even I'm working here as a, a national service personnel, and I'm to come work here, my company is here, and I'm being paid 559 in a month. My in and out is about 300, this is in 30 cities mm. in a day. Now take the 30 cities from the 559, how much is left per day? You just make it, let's say if Saturdays and Sundays are more even part, 24 days in a month. 30 cities by 24, how much is gone? Have you talked about what to eat? What, what, I mean, what, where to even sleep? Light bill, have you, have you come into that night? So the, 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 the issue is serious. And it's a threat. Listen, one of the most dangerous threats to is any nation is a hungry youth. And that's what we are seeing. I am not in any way advocating that they should do what they are doing. It's, it's not the best thing to do. But when they are hungry, the person will look for something. They said, a hungry man is an angry man. The person will do anything to feed. So you are saying that because there are no jobs, and then the pressure is mounting on people to get money. They have to. That is what is increasing the number of crimes we Honorable, are seeing in the country. They have to survive. That is why somebody will go and go for rituals. Well, well, on, on, on what purpose? If not, excuse my word, quote unquote, if not selfish purpose. On what purpose again will somebody kill somebody for money? If not to feed. The person wants to feed. If this rabbit thing that is happening, why would they go and rob you if you have something to do and you are making your own money? Would you? I remember in our youth parliament debate, you made mention of Finland. Why would they so determine? Why could somebody just see your purse or your wallet on the floor and then return it to you? Because, Charlie, everybody is okay. Not, I mean, super okay, but everybody is doing something and they are feeding from it. But here lies the case, you don't even, what you even eat in a day is a problem. So if there is an opportunity, that's why some of them will just call each other and say, Charlie, today let's go out. We need to go and do operation. And they are going for operation. I tell you, I'm not there yet. But honorable, I don't want to bring this out on set because we are on national television. But if I tell the number of people who come to you and say, oh, Charlie, I'm hungry today, can you, I mean, give me something small. And all these things goes in. So due to that, the youth is ready. You see, if you train somebody how to shoot, mm, and you leave the person out to go for free, what is going to happen is that the next time the person, when the person gets a gun, the person will come out to you. That is a, one of the problems we're having with these, uh, both political parties, they are vigilantism. When you train the people and you don't give them work, they will come at you. If you are playing with a tiger in the house, when the tiger goes, what does it do? It comes at you. So first, we are looking at it from an economical angle where the unemployment rate is rising and you can see how people are responding to it. You can feel the pinch in it. Now you can see it in transportation, you can see it in your food, you can see it in, in, in your movement. Do you understand? So. These youth are ready to do anything to survive. For example, what happened at the magazine? The lady was killed and the hair was chopped off. The hair was just shaved for what? Rituals to get what? Money. So assuming everybody is working, would you get time to go and then even have time? I sh like you are supposed to report to work by 6 and then close by say 5 or maybe say 6 in the evening. When you get home, you are tired. Or they get time to go and kill somebody else, honorable. So, so you are saying that aside selfishness and greed, the major problem, the major cause of these insecurities in our country, and the surge of criminal activities, is because we don't have employment it's, for the youth. It's, it's, it's a fact. So, in your candid opinion, from where you are sitting, we are speaking for for the youth. Mm. What do you think? Government should do. I, I don't, I don't, you know, there are a lot of jobs out there. People continue to see. What is that one thing that you think that when government does, it's going to open up for more people to get into the job sector? 
I think government, one of the things it can actually do right now is to get uh, this an industrial training section. I mean, industry and then skill training personnel. There should be a center that will actually lead these people in to revolutionize their mind about how they do things. So are you trying to say in a, a different context that educational system or a curriculum is not helping us in just producing people who are just doing show and poor and then they just come back to the house with their paper certificates and they have no innovation? Is that what you're saying? Recently, the Minister of Education made mention that mm. our system is too poor and it's making the young ones timid. The student in it. He said it. I'm not I'm just quoting him. That's what he said. So we are in a system where theory has become more than the practical. So the job market is also looking for people who can be able to think things. Is that not what we want? When your child comes home with the F9, I'm asking you specifically, when your child comes home with an F9 on the paper mm. and and then I, I, your different word comes home with A. Hmm. Whom are you going to give appraisal to? Probably you give appraisal to the one with A. Thank you. But the point is, are we looking at the A or we are looking at the end product? What would a person be able to do in future? So what, what do you think that government should consider when it comes to our educational system? Because all these unemployment going back and forth with this particular topic, the, the problem is with the educational sector. That is a point. That is what we are all trying to see. That look, if you have an open stomach where you can accommodate the youth, I mean, there was this uh, youth youth start program. Yeah, you that have youth start. You have STEM. See, it's a very good initiative, but it shouldn't just be talk and no work. The youth start. What are we starting from? What programs are being put in place? Who and who is benefiting from the system? If you're able to empower someone, two or three people, and they come out and they are also employing, not just employing. So you that is one thing I'm keep on saying that look, if you're able to look at our educational system, that look, where we are heading to, we are moving to the ditch. Because look, this is no one needs someone who can sit in the office and just put on time. We are looking for people who can work. So there are people with the PhDs, with the masters, and you ask them a simple question, they can't even answer. So you ask yourself, ah, where would this person get a PhD or this from? We are looking for people when they put the thing that a person can do work on it. You are getting the point. So why don't we look at the educational system again? What are we not doing right? So in your youth perspective, what are we not doing right? I think the training section of the youth is supposed something that we are supposed to revamp. Look, go to the basic, look for because, uh, like I did mention the last time I quoted in one of our youths uh, at the parliament sitting, that if <laughs> Bible said train the child, the way to go, and when he goes, he will not depart. Proverbs twenty-two verse six. Mm -hmm. All right. What do we want to see in the in these youths in the next future? Because mind you, they are our next generation. They are future leaders. What do you want to see in them? So if we want to see this proactive youth who are ready to work, then we have to start it with them from the basic. There are a lot of them who, when they come up from JHS or SHS, they can't even continue school. But if you start this program with them from the onset, when a person comes up from GHS, SHS, and a person cannot control, a person has some skills in hand, that a person will not come to their mother and say, Mommy, give you money to go and buy food anymore, because the person knows what to do to get some money. You understand? And then that person, for instance, people don't regard some works. But let me tell you, these are the works that make money. Example, fashion designers, they, they, they used to call them tailors and seamstress. When a person is sewing, do you know how much they charge per shirt now? Do you know how much they are making from it? So you are the one who has completed university. You are still sitting in the house looking for a job, and a person is working. I met a colleague when we were in primary school. This in primary six, we continue. She actually dropped out and then started learning this handiwork. And she said, "Boss, now with almost about 
10 workers under her. And Charlie, a person is making, a person has even built a house and then living comfortable. So what signal are you sending to our youth? Because everybody wants to have a white color job and a blue color job, you feel like, you know, now I can't go to school and become a, a mechanic. Meanwhile, we all need that mechanic to face our car. We all want to buy cars. The car will go faulty. What, what signal are you sending to them? You see, one thing I need to send before I even send to them is, uh, look, that is, if the youth are looking for a white color job, it's because of how the leaders have made it be. What's that? How have they made it? They've made it that if you don't have the degree, you can't work anywhere. Look, there are people naturally, this show that you are hosting, who can naturally host the show, who can do extremely good in it. But because the person doesn't have that paper course certificate, the person is not qualified. I can tell you that there are 90% of the youth who are hopping on the floor, on the ground right now that don't have work to do, can do 90% even better than what the people with the certificate are doing. Go to our ministries, go to our, I mean, uh, companies, state-owned companies. 70 years, 64 years, 50, I mean, 60 plus, they are still at post, working, and the youth are in the house. The, the person is qualified, but the person is also given, the, the, the elderly person is then given another contract, and then it's contract upon contract, when the youth are in the house looking for a job to do. They are extending their contract because government says that some of them have exceptional expertise. Where were those exceptional especially when they were coming up? Couldn't they have trained anybody? The best way to be a leader is to train somebody when you are not there, the person will be there. A good leader is the one who has a replacement. Let them feel your absence even when somebody is there to do your work. It's by bringing them on board. Share their ideas. Teach the person. So, okay, the person has been at the workplace for about 30 or 40 years and the person was not able to train anybody. Within the two years or three years contract you are giving to the person, the person can train somebody to replace him or her. Does it make, I mean, is it logical? No. You have been given contract. You are working. Honorable, as you are sitting here right now, your best motive is that if tomorrow you are not here, there should be somebody capable enough to host this show. So your producer should be learning from you. And you should be telling your producer what to do at what time. So that tomorrow, in case of any emergency, the person can sit in your place. So if you are not there, then the show doesn't run. What kind of a leader are you? I don't know if what I'm saying, it makes what you are trying to get. What kind of a leader are you? So it's the leadership that has made the youth who they are today. Because they are not, they are not, they are not they are training not, us. No, they are not training us. They are not giving you the opportunity. And when you go to the industry, when you go to the station, what they are looking for is your certificate. Are you qualified? What is, what is your qualification? Are we looking at qualification? We are looking at manpower, what the person can do. Go to the go to outside country. Go to US. Go to the UK. Go to the German. What can you do? Put it on paper. Prove yourself. You say you are a host, sitting in a seat. Please, give me some line. Let me see. I bring you a guest. Interview the person. Let me see. And then, that's little, little thing the person is not able to do. You then polish the person up. And that's why I loved this woman so much. She sees you from your talent, and then she polish you up. She don't ask you what's your qualification. These are the leaders we need to train people. Let, I mean, give the person a chance. Let the person try. If the person is not doing it right, you tell the person, this is how you are supposed to. So, before you leave, you have a replacement. So, yes, the youth will always fight for white color job because that is what the leaders have shown us to do. So, now, somebody, a youth is in the house watching and is, is wondering where he or she can get a job to do. The person has already completed maybe JHS and has nobody to help him or her. Completed SHS has nobody to help him or her further the education. Even some have completed a university and a master's and PhD like you are talking. These category of people, what do you tell them? Now that government is trying to, let me put it that way, trying to 
help the youth get jobs to do now that the government is trying and he's not yet in what do they do okay um thanks for this brilliant question <laughs> i don't know why you put you in a tight corner right now <laughs> the, the truth is that uh, we are all fighting for job mm. but i think it's about time we identify what we can actually do you see in as much as you have been into school and you are doing a lot of things there is some special talent you have that you need to nurture it up it might not pay today but pay critical attention to it because it will pay tomorrow i remember in my days in i mean media school my lecturer told me he looked at me and said mohammed you have the talent you have everything to become the best in the industry but what i want to tell you today is that do not change the money today do the good work and it will pay off one day and from there i've been doing the good work sometimes i go to some of the media houses without even asking for salary i just want to work because of the passion i have for it and the time came it, it, it time came it was paying off it wasn't paying off basically by sitting on the in the set but other things that i was doing outside the media like it was in connection with the media were paying me off so what I can tell the youth who are look, watching or listening today is that pay critical attention to that special talent you have in you. It starts from somewhere. See, it will surprise that you have one CD with you or ten CDs with you. You start selling pure water today. Somebody will tell you, how can a graduate like me sell a pure water? You have no idea. Do you know one of the things that you can make 100% profit is selling a pure water? 100% profit. If you buy the, 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 the bag, mm for six cities and you are selling it say 40 40 pesos you are making no it is 50 pesos so even uh -huh, so you see so even you are making 110 percent of it but if you are making if you are even making uh, if you are selling 40 pesos square well, there is 60 pieces in it 30 pieces 30 sorry thank you thank you for the correction there are 30 pieces in it so you're going to make times two of what you bought it from so 100 percent interest that's the only way you can do and you're getting 100 percent interest without even thinking about it because and you can see the climate have changed mm -hmm. the system is hot mm -hmm. so people will definitely will be testy even if they are not tested pain will be testy <laughs> then you can buy so it brings you this kind of work that you want to do there are other skill works that you might not value like mechanic like uh, i mean electrician you don't value it but these are the people who are making the real money real money my cousin my cousin was he, he he was young when he started doing these electrical things and so i just told mommy mommy let him come and stay with me and when he came i actually took him to one mechanic shop that he, i want him to learn the electrical aspect of it and within one month the guy can maybe repair your electrical fort car for you young boy very young and now he's there he's making the money i sometimes when i go to him and like, give him some funds because oh that even she can be answered with home, you understand? And that's how it is going to be. So identify this small, small, this fashion designer, people call them the tailors. Please, they are making the money. I'm even trying to go into one very soon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they are making the money. And people, now, if you look at our system now, we are buying into this idea of our own, mm -hmm. the kaftan and other things. People are sewing so much. What are you waiting for? go into it if not that um, start working before i realize you are making i i know of uh, a pastor who is my godfather though i will not mention his name for security reasons he's a, a furniture maker all right and he's making the millions he's making this scotch and things and he's making the expensive one result of the insecurity we are talking about. Well, now let's look at societal aspects. Mm, let's wrap up with that. Right. So, societal or social, social media aspect of the whole thing is what is also increasing our insecurity in the country. For example, now I am holding an Apple phone, right? So, everybody who sees me right now, wow, he's having an Apple phone. I want to have it. And you are.
so eager and faster and you want to get it no relax so one of the things i think our regulation body have to do is to regulate things that comes out in the media space for instance what happened at kaswa example the kids were saying they were watching tv and then this one and doing a lot of things bring tens this and you get hundreds of bring and people are eager to do that Gary. Mm, you understand? Quick look. so those are some of the things that we need to look at now to wrap up talking about the incident that happened at that's the conflict what? in Boko okay. right now for a while yes it was out of uh, this ritual things that have enthusiastic youth Listen, thing that want to make everything, want to also drive, want to hold the iPhone, want to also have the big, I mean, houses. And some of their boys, their girls, and their ladies are giving them pressure. They need iPhone 14, so they have to find a way to make it. That's just by the way. But go like this. Look, I don't think I have the locals to speak to the issue there, but to say something very bad. The incident has have its political terrain. And it's, I mean, uh, ethnicity, like these yeah, ethnic et groups and anything, I mean, as part of the whole thing. If you study from the history, I don't know if I have that time to go through some of the data I have with me today. If you check from time immemorial, you understand that every government that comes shifts the rulership of the area all right so there was them these two people are there from the mampusi and then the kusasi these are the two major people who are actually fighting there. so this when these political parties in power they will think okay we are we are the legitimate people so push it uh, when this one comes then so it has always been flipping from left to right and then from right to left as last when even it was under President Kufo's regime when he won the 2000 election. So the people, the, 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 the Kusasi and other things, I mean, mm. were thinking there at this time that when he has come in, because the, the government and other things were, I mean, the Dankwa Bujia tradition, you know, that has now emerged as an MPP. So they were thinking that, okay, now that you have come, we are an ally of you, so you have to bring us back to power, you have to rule in our favor. But unfortunately for them, President Kufo they didn't go through that tangent. See, so the political aspect of this whole thing is one of the things that is keeping this fight going. So, if politicians can actually step out from it and allow the Indians of the place to decide who is to rule us, you can only do that by adding your voice. That, okay, A, B, C, D. I mean, there are legitimate means of which we can actually claim who is a rightful ruler of which area. Mm. So, they can go to court and in the early 2000, this in a 2003, even 2009 or so, Supreme Court has brought out a ruling as to what is supposed to be done at that place. So I think that the Bokunaba and then the Nairi, Nairi, or Nairi, Nairi, the Nairi, they should sit. There are two people. This blood sharing is becoming too much in the area. They should understand that, look, we are one people in one Ghana. So instead of us fighting for what is to a leadership who mm -hmm. is leading, I mean, we can actually talk about it. Okay, why don't we have it this way? I mean, there could be this kind of sharing of power, mm -hmm. rule for four years. This one rule for four years. Mm -hmm. It will bring an understanding. Okay, so you know that after four years, this one goes, this one comes, just like the way we have in our constitution. So that both of them will understand what needs to be done at what place. And then we are good to go. Yes, so. Interesting. Yeah. I see. That was, that was an educative and insightful conversation we just had. When you are a youth, you have your share. You are a government, you have your share. You are, you are a chief, you have your share. This is what you get on broad daylight. Sure. You will not get it anywhere on broad daylight. Wow.
What will be your final words? Okay, so my final words will be, first I you need to say, um, the government should be up and doing in terms of this kind of unemployment things that is going on. We know it, they can't care all, but if it pushes a bit faster, we'll be able to get the youth resenting from this kind of attitude that we are seeing in them. And the other aspect is also to the youth that, look, do not be so much hasty to get things that you didn't suffer for. Relax, because your time will come. It's about time. Bible let us understand that God has plans for everything that he does. So if only we will get patient and work and work towards whatever we have in our mind, we are going to get there. And finally, to the incident that is happening at Boko, the Boko Naba and the Nigeria, with all humanity we are pleading, this bloodshed is becoming too much. Consider the future of your younger generation. Consider the future of the young ones who are coming out. The, one of the reasons why the northern region has become one of the poorest regions in the country, I mean the three or now four northern regions, is as a result of this conflict that keeps on happening every year. And so there's not been any structure for development in the country. Because when the structure is coming up, there's a fight and everything is gone. So consider the development of your area, consider the development of your kids, consider the future of your kids. And then I think if we can put this into perspective, if we can sit together as brothers, and talk it through, we'll, f we'll find a lasting solution to it. And finally, I want to talk to my, my constituents, the good people of Adenta constituency, that look, I am doing what I can, and I hope you will support our initiatives that we are bringing on board, that at the end of the day, all of us will smile as we want to. Thank you. Honorable, one thing. Wow. I just want to wish somebody a happy birthday before the person kills me. I mean. The person is uh, Nanaya. Her name is actually is uh, Gifty. Gifty, whatever you are, this is your father, your role model. Because I want to say a very a blessed happy birthday to you. And may God bless you. And may he make you great. And the very last one to my mother. Mama Philo, I love you so much. This is your son, Mohammed. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, too. Thank you, too. This is where we draw today's getting on broad daylight. Please, a youth, let's take our time. And like he said, pure water can help at all. And then the billion in pass 100%. He start from somewhere and get to somewhere. More and more pay iPhone 13, 14 Pro, it's a 14 one why not? Moon year, moon edge, maybe I'm more stressing by money will create. And it's a mountain was quiet. Now, who near to me a call? Who near to me a picture? One can say, We do man, I won't say, Sweet, I will be a song was a little iPhone. Now they are turning on stress. You'll be better, my would be a Say, Uncle Toy from fourteen was a day and then mom and bra. One cast out someone who gone here, maybe I cry. You know, so today um I had with me Honorable Mohammed um Dauda, he's the YMP for Adenta constituency of the youth empowerment consortium and youth world parliament. He has said a whole lot. In fact, if you've missed this particular piece, a rewind. I'm going to play and listen. So this show is probably sponsored by Endpoint Homeopathy Clinic. If you are suffering from stroke, diabetes, and any chronic disease, kindly um, find your way there. You can locate them at Accra Sphintex, Tema Takrade, Techiman, and Kumasi. Also, call the doctor himself on 0244-867-068. 0244-867-068. For all your health issues will be resolved. Kindly follow us on our social media handles. Facebook is CMJTV.